We welcome all of you to this celebration here at the St. Bonaventure Chapel on this, the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Greetings to our visitors who are here for the first time or those of you who might be returning after an absence. The presider for today's liturgy is Bishop Battersby from the Archdiocese of Detroit. Please follow the usher's lead to start the procession for communion entering from the side aisles and returning through the center. Remember to keep social distancing and please pay attention to the seat markers indicating where to sit. If there is no sign on a seat, please refrain from sitting there. As all of us as a family in the Catholic Church continue to journey through coronavirus prevention, the Archdiocese of Detroit has recently updated its protocols for singing during masses. Mass attendees are now invited and encouraged to sing the parts of the mass while being protected with a face mask. So please do feel free to sing the Gloria, Alleluia, the Holy Holy, the Memorial Acclamation, the Amen, and the Lamb of God. The music ministry will sing the other songs in a manner similar to recent weeks. They will sing newer repertoire that you can enjoy in a spirit of silent and meditative prayer. Thank you for your cooperation as we enter into this new phase of coronavirus prevention. We look forward to hearing you sing the parts of the Mass with us and join us in silent prayer as the music ministry sings the other hymns and songs. Until such time that the ban is lifted for passing the collection baskets during Mass, there is a basket at the entrance for this purpose. Thank you. We now invite you to silence your cell phones and electric devices while we pause for a moment before beginning Mass. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, on this 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, it is the Holy Spirit who draws us to this place. It is the Holy Spirit who seeks to knit us together 
into one people, one people formed in the heart of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, one people who are a church called out to share in the identity and mission of Christ. And so as we enter this singular sacrifice, the sacrifice which has reconciled all creation unto the Father, we take a moment and ask God's pardon that we might be shriven from our sins and freed to give glory to God. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that, with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
a reading from the first book of Kings. The Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream at night. God said, ask something of me and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, O Lord my God, you have made me your servant, king to succeed my father David. But I am a mere youth, not knowing at all how to act. I serve you in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a people so vast that it cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an, under, an un, understanding heart to judge your people and to distinguish right from wrong. For who is able to govern this vast people of yours? The Lord was pleased that Solomon made this request. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, not for a long life for yourself, nor for riches, nor for the life of your enemies, but for under understanding so that you may know what is right, I do as you requested. I give you a heart so wise in understanding that there has never been anyone like you up to now, and after you, there will come no one to equal you. The word of the Lord. Be
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure buried in a field which a person finds and hides again and out of joy goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant searching for fine pearls. When he finds a pearl of great price, he goes and sells all that he has and buys it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net thrown into the sea, which collects fish of every kind. When it is full, they haul it ashore and sit down to put what is good into buckets. What is bad, they throw away. Thus, it will be at the end of the age. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous and throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be wailing and grinding of teeth. Do you understand all these things? They answered, yes. And he replied, then every scribe who has been instructed in the kingdom of heaven is like the head of the household, who brings from his storeroom both the new and the old. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, it is with joy that I greet you this morning. I'm grateful to Father David 
and to all the Capuchin priests and brothers for inviting me to celebrate this Holy Mass with you this morning during the Novena leading to Blessed Solanus's feast on the 30th of July. I am, I confess, a regular visitor to the monastery as my mother and grandmother were before me. I avail myself of the opportunity, as do many of the priests and seminarians of the Archdiocese of Detroit, to go to confession and also to seek the aid Blessed Solanus provides for the needs of those, for those who have asked me for my prayers, because you see, I want to supersize my prayers. And so I join my prayers to Solanus's prayers, because I know that one of us is going to be effective. <laughs> it's important that we commend each other to the Lord. And how much does it impinge upon us this morning? The beautiful words of St. James, whose feast we celebrated yesterday, that the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Now understand, that's a righteous man and a righteous woman. It's not just men but they availeth much because God hears them. Blessed Solanus truly opens the doors to holiness. His brothers continue this tradition, which they and Blessed Solanus receive from their older brother, Capuchins. Today's gospel reading couldn't be any more perfect for our benefit Amidst the novena, we have been praying in the anticipated feast of Blessed Solanus. Today's gospel is a continuation of the parables we've been hearing these past few Sundays from the 13th chapter of St. Matthew's gospel. They're on discipleship, on what it looks like. When, if you'll permit me to borrow a contemporary phrase, what it looks like when you're woke. St. Matthew records Jesus telling us, but blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see but did not see it. And to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. What did they see? What did they hear? They heard and saw Jesus. They heard and saw something greater than Solomon. As we read in today's gospel, Solomon was the wisest man in the world. And before them, what they saw and heard was something greater. They heard and saw what the true family of Jesus was like. When the disciples told Jesus that his mother and brothers were outside and asking to speak with him, he said, for whoever does the will of my father is my brother and sister and mother. What did they see and what did they hear? They heard the announcement of the coming of God's kingdom. They heard the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and the parable of the sower and in the parable of the weeds among the wheat. They heard that the kingdom of heaven is like unto a mustard seed that is infinitesimally small, yet grows beyond imagination into a large bush which nurtures creation. 
like a bit of leaven, which transforms the entire measure of wheat flour. They saw and heard that the kingdom of heaven is of incalculable value, like a treasure in a field where all is risked to obtain it. It is like a pearl whose possession is worth everything to acquire, a place which contains every kind of person and creature. Jesus and his kingdom bring joy beyond measure, and to lose it, more calamitous than the damage any tempest could conjure. Our first reading this morning recounts a conversation with God and his servant Solomon, one, one they had in a dream. God offers Solomon a gift. The gift Solomon chooses is the gift of a wise and understanding heart. And this pleases the Lord very much. In fact, the Lord is so pleased that he not only grants Solomon a wise and understanding heart, he grants him also riches and glory and a promise that if Solomon follows God, he will have a long life. This too couldn't be more perfect of a reading in the midst of the novena for Blessed Solanus. Blessed Solanus was a soul, after all, who had a wise and understanding heart. He was, despite his simplicity, another Solomon. I know this might fly in the face of much evidence to the contrary, that Blessed Solanus was not necessarily known for his erudition. He was even unable to be granted the faculty for preaching. There are stories, and I don't know if they're apocryphal or not, Father David can tell me after Mass, that the novices themselves found his simplicity in some measure risible and were not overwhelmed even by his piety and certainly not by his musical gifts. I like the story, even if it is apocryphal. The truth of this is that among all of us, attested to, attested to even by Jesus, who noticed ruefully that many in Israel missed the time of their visitation, I would like to say this morning to you that I would have recognized Blessed Solanus' sanctity, but the truth is I would have probably missed it too. Having said this, Blessed Solanus not only had the charism of healing, but how he accept that, assess, accessed that gift is that he helped people be vulnerable to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit through the office of a wise and understanding heart. What Blessed Solanus lacked in Latin and German skills from his seminary training, he more than made up for this as a porter who ushered souls into the door of the sanctuary, the sanctuary of the Lord where he could find aid and timely help where he or she could meet the divine physician, the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. One of the reasons Solanus had such a wise and understanding heart is he allowed himself in a profound way to be caught up in the mystery of Christ. There's no secret to Solanus' power. There's no secret at all. Yet it, it is 
for all of us, and it requires a submission to the ministrations of the Divine Spirit. A willingness to be caught up in Christ and to become another Christ. To be caught up, my brothers and sisters, in the holiness of God. Because God says to each of us, be holy for I am holy. Be perfect for your heavenly Father is perfect. Solanus heeded those words and in the simplicity of his heart took them to himself. Blessed Solanus was able to be the door to holiness because he heard and saw what the prophets and the righteous people longed to see and hear. He came to know the pearl of great price and he sold all he had to purchase the field wherein that treasure lay. Think of this. What prevents us most from becoming like, Solom becoming like Solanus is our holding on to ourself, to our own ego, to our own plan. What's necessary? is that we take to heart the words St. Paul says in the letter to the Ephesians, that it is God's plan to reestablish or refound all creation in Christ. That was true for Solanus, who allowed himself to be reestablished in Christ. And it is true for you and for me. Blessed Solanus was before he was a healer, a man of faith who placed his trust and confidence in God alone. He was a priest of God whose heart was truly God's alone. Today's gospel ultimately describes the wise one who sells, sells all to obtain what eye has not seen and ear has not heard, what even has entered the human heart to imagine for those that love the Lord. You know, I was talking with Brother Richard before Mass, and Brother Richard was recounting a story of healing that his brother received. I have my own story. In fact, I'll bet many of us here today could recount their own story or the stories of their family. When my mother was young, her mother, who had a great confidence in Father Solanus, sent Ferg on a streetcar to enroll mom in the seraphic mass. Her brother Ferg came and talked to Father Solanus to purchase a mass and Father Solanus asked him why he was there and he said he recounted what his sister's problem was. Father Solanus said don't worry she'll be fine when you get home and she was. Not long before she died I came here one day for confession, as was my custom, as is my custom, and I stopped at Father Solanus's grave, not this fancy one, the one before it. And I knelt, and I was a little bit obnoxious, and I said to Father Solanus, listen, you healed my mother when she was young. Now, my mother had Alzheimer's, and she was making that slow descent. And of course, I was worried about her. And I said to him, Father, you healed my mother was young, and so you have a stake in her, in her life. You need to heal her if, if that's God's will. And without missing a beat, he said to me, and I mean this literally, he said to me, she'll be okay for a while 
and then she won't. And do you know, for about the next six months, mom was fine. And then she died suddenly. Father Solanus didn't heal her. He knew it was her time to come home. It was her time to go to the house of her father. What Father Solanus simply did was steady the heart of a loving son. And that's what he did for so many. And that's what he does for us today. He's not going to, unless it is God's will, to answer every prayer in the way we desire. But what he will do is show us the door to holiness, an abandonment to the divine will, a willingness to allow God to be God in our lives, to believe in Jesus, and to enter into the power of his kingdom. God bless you, and may God be praised for his servant, Blessed Solanus Casey. Believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in the Father's love, we turn our hearts to him through Christ our Lord. Our prayer response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of a courageous faith that the church will constantly strive to fulfill God's will in all things, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of hope that all who seek the reign of God will not be discouraged in time of doubt and spiritual darkness, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of love for God, that we may be spiritually alive in Christ, the firstborn of many sisters and brothers, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of wisdom, that all who serve in public office may perform their duties with understanding and moral integrity. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of reverence, that all godly people may display respect for God's word in creation, 
and especially the dignity of others, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gift of compassion, that our hearts may respond to the cries of all who suffer, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we are your sons and daughters and have been made so by the blood of the Lamb. We ask you, Father, for an increase in the supernatural virtues of faith, hope, and love. We ask that through the intercession of Blessed Solanus, of St. Anne and St. Joachim, we might be faithful followers of your Son, that we might be abandoned to the divine plan. And we ask this, Father, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gifts, that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, 
by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. In, as in exaltation, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. By the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread in giving thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed 
Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Anne, St. Joachim, blessed Solanus Casey, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and in charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our bishop, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people your son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin. And safe from all distresses, we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our prayer for a spiritual communion. Blessed Solanus would encourage people who couldn't get to Mass or receive communion to ask Jesus to come spiritually into their hearts. He himself did this throughout the day, even when he did celebrate Mass and receive communion. A friend of his asked him one day how to actually go about doing this. Blessed Solanus told him, this is what I say. Lord, please come to me in spiritual communion. Send your body and blood gushing through my veins. Send your love into my heart, my soul, and my mind. Lift me up to your bosom and infuse me with your divine love. Amen.
this year ahead of our novena, we thought it would be uh, best to uh, perhaps um, develop the novena around uh, prayers uh, in which Solanus used so frequently in uh, aspects of his life and spirituality. The prayer that we'll use now is the result of that endeavor. The invocation part, which I will say reflects a part, uh, a particular aspect of uh, Solanus's life. And the response part, which everyone prays after me, uh, is our blessed Solanus's own words. Father, you are holy, the source of all holiness. We praise you, O God, for creating us, bringing us into our families and this beautiful but very fragile planet Earth. We praise you, O God, for sending us your own Son, Jesus, to give himself completely to us as our Savior and our brother. We praise you, O God, for gifting us with faith for living in us and making us part of the church, the body of Christ on earth. We praise you, O God, for sending your spirit to guide us every step of the way on our journey of life. We praise you, O God, for giving us your mother to be our mother and protector. We praise you, O God, for giving us experiences throughout our lives to let us know your presence and your call. We praise you, O God, for constantly forgiving us when we pay no attention to your guidance and choose sinful paths instead. We praise you, O God, for the gift of vocation, single life, marriage, uh, religious life, and priesthood. We praise you, O God, for the gift of the Eucharist. Draw us again and again in your own sacrificial loving. We praise you, O oh God, for the gift of neighbors, especially those who, like Solanus's parents, are immigrants or refugees, all who are poor and sick and struggling to make ends meet. We praise you, O oh God, for the gift of sharing your uh, cross with us through uh, setbacks and hardships. We praise you, O oh God, for the loving plan you have in each of us and our living and our dying. I give my soul to Jesus Christ. We praise you, O oh God, for your desire to have each of us with you and blessed Solanus forever in heaven. We thank God. <laughs> Dear Lord, you are so good, so loving to us all. Together, 
O oh God, I adore you. I give myself to you. May I be the person you want me to be. And may your will be done in my life today. I thank you for the gifts you gave to Father Solanus. If it is your will, bless us in the canonization of Solanus. That others may imitate and carry on his love for all the poor and the suffering of our world. As he joyfully accepted your divine plans, I ask you, according to your will, to hear my prayer for Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Blessed be God in all his designs. We have consumed, O oh Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift, which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before you bless us, we want to thank you for being here and I'm sure I am sure that your grandmother would say that you did a good job <laughs> <laughs> please extend your hands Lord this servant of yours is and will have to deal with a number of questions. And they will be beyond his human understanding. He will need divine wisdom and divine power to help lead this church in these difficult and treacherous and at times confusing times, bless him in his ministry and help us all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a reminder to those of you online and that we, 745, we will continue to have mass and the novena and that on the feast day, on Thursday, Mass is at 7.45, noon and 7 p.m. God bless you. It is a great honor for me to be with you today, to be here in this place, made holy by the love of so many priests and brothers who have given their life in the service of the poor, made holy by Father Solanus' own sacrifice, and by your sacrifice as well. And so it's a great privilege to be with you. It's always a comfort to my heart to be with people who love Jesus and seek that he be loved. So thank you, and God bless you all. Remember, rejoicing always must be our strength. The Lord be with you. And with your strength. May the blessing of Almighty God descend upon you and remain with you forever. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Open heart and
Oh. 